Hi, this is Jeff with Junior Hockey Advisor. We're going to break down the North American Hockey League roster. Specifically today, we're going to focus on the tender. We're going to do several short videos. This one's going to be five minutes or less. Let's get rolling. So let's break down the roster in general terms. The roster is made up of returners, tenders, draft picks, free agents, and affiliates. These are also the categories that fill your main camp. And what is the main camp and what is the purpose of a main camp? A main camp is where a team invites a bunch of different players in, including their returners, their free agents, their draft picks, the affiliates, and their tenders, and they have a showcase of talent. Coming out of main camp, there are 35 protected players, and only 35. That is a 35 come out of main camp, you roster trims down as the preseason goes on, finally ending uh, somewhere right when the games start, maybe a few games into the year, the roster will be trimmed down to 23. That's where you want to be. So it could start out at 100, 150, 200 players at main camp. The final number is 23. Returners, tenders, draft picks, no player is guaranteed a spot after main camp. So let's define the tender. The tender is a contract of sorts. A player signs with the intentions to play for that particular team in the North American Hockey League and only that team. Once signed, your rights belong to that team, uh, but it doesn't affect you on any teams outside of the North American Hockey League. Each team is granted 10 tenders, uh, of which two include tenders to be used exclusively on players from the North American, uh, the NAPHL, that's the 16 and 18s, uh, excluding trades, that is. Tenders are not drafted. Once again, seven tenders can be used on anybody, two tenders for the NAPHL, one tender for the NA3HL. Teams do not have to disclose their tenders. Some do. You'll go to their social media, you'll see their tenders are actually uh, uh, listed, or they'll, they'll individually showcase their tenders. But rarely do you see all of the team's tenders listed anywhere. The league tracks them. They know all 10, including the trades back and forth from other teams. Uh, and each team individually knows. And they also have that, lead, that list is shared internally between the general managers. So they all are aware of what other teams are doing and who they have tendered. That also keeps teams from uh, encroaching on other players. So which is more important, the tender or the draft pick? Well, that's, <laughs> that's a really good question. And it might not be a question that can be answered completely and specifically here. And it might be a question that each individual team, general manager and coach, feel a little bit differently about. In fact, it's very, very evident by the way people use their tenders and their drafts that some teams wait one more than the other. Tenders are done. Their relationships you've built, they can be done during the season. So you can have your U18s, your prep players, your high school players coming out of Minnesota or Detroit, you can have those tenders in place before the draft even happens. So they can be announced prior to the season ending. You can't really do that with other junior teams because they're still under contract. Most would say the tenders are more important because the tenders happen before the draft. So it, many people look at it and say, hey, look, if I get drafted in the first round draft pick, I'm really the 11th pick of this team because they had 10 uh, tenders before me. Well, that's not necessarily true because first of all, you know, knowing that two are coming from the NAPHL and one's coming from the NA3 uh, uh, league, if you're drafted number one and you're coming from the USHL and you got a whole year of USHL experience, I don't think anybody would expect you to fall underneath uh, those players from those three, uh, th those three players from those two respective leagues. So there's a really good chance that the draft picks are, are actually better players in some cases than the tenders. The tenders are assured, the tenders are already being locked in uh, because they know who they are, they can access those players. You can't really access a player that's currently playing in the USHL and tender him. Uh, that's why the draft's used. Now, the other reason the draft is, is different in this league, and we're gonna get into that, is because you're, you're drafting up and you're drafting from below to pull up and players from the top pulling down. It's a different situation than anybody else has as far as their draft situation goes. So we'll get into that in the draft video. So that's our discussion about breaking down the North American Hockey League rocks, roster specific to the tender. Like I said, we'll have other videos coming out really shortly dealing with the draft pick and other components of the roster. 
I hope this helped. I told you I keep it short. Have a great day. Hey, you know the drill. If you like what you saw, hit like. Uh, subscribe to us, no matter if you're on the Facebook page or on YouTube. Also, take the time to check out juniorhockeyadvisor.com. We've got webinars there for hiring uh, advisors, for building a marketing plan, for industry professionals. If you want to be a scout or a coach in the junior world, we've got services for you. We look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.